Hi, this podcast is inspired by just more deepening of my practice and what I'm learning about myself uh, as I continue to be consistent on a daily basis with my morning practice. And what I've come to today is more about having a definition of how I want to show up versus how I need the world to show up for me being happy. Uh, this is one that has really changed how I, I behave in life and what I require of life uh, to be happy or to be peaceful or to be kind. And over the last month, I really uh, dove, dove pretty deep into um, what that looks like uh, to live an unconditional life of needing people to show up a certain way for me to be kind or for me to be peaceful or leading, needing life to work out for it to be a good day. Like I've given all that up because all of that is out of my control. And, you know, Keith 1.0 required so much of both people and things and places and the world to be happy or to feel settled. It was all around my expectations or what I needed uh, uh, everyone to do for me to be happy. Again, when I look at it and take a step back, that really makes no sense because I have literally no control over places, things, uh, certainly not people of how they're supposed to act. And so once I began to step back over the last couple of weeks, I really realized that I want to create a definition of what it will take for me to be a certain way to be fine, no matter what shows up, no matter who shows up, no matter how, how things go. And what that is, is, is to not be bothered by what happens. Whatever happens, it's all part of the practice, no matter what it is. You know, most recently, uh, this really showed up for me uh, in a positive way because of this practice. And I had to give a presentation uh, recently, really late at night. And we had been planning it for a while. And there were going to be people that were going to, who were going to attend, who were part of a, the, you know, the third shift at work. And so, you know, my days start really early in the morning uh, with my morning practice, sometimes as early as 4 a.m. And on this particular morning, it started at 4 a.m. And my presentation was after a long day of not only, you know, work, but also, you know, graduate school classes. And the, the presentation was at 7.30 in the evening. So get there, all ready to go. I have my colleague who's there to support uh, the show. And we're ready to roll. So 7.30, no one's there. <laughs> 7.40, no one's there. 7.45, 8 o'clock, no one's there. And the old Keith, Keith 1.0, would have had a fit right now. Would have been thinking negative thoughts about, you know, uh, the person who's responsible for making sure that this happens. Uh, thinking about there's no way that this could happen. You know, we can still pull this off tonight. But not only did I have to, not only did I not have to go through the steps of reminding myself that this is out of my control and to accept this moment, I didn't do any of that. I mean, because of the practice and because of my definition of how I, the definition I have for myself to be peaceful, which is no matter what happens, it's okay. I've really made it a point to not get into being bothered by anything or anyone or the world, like not being bothered is my practice. So I didn't have to go through all those steps of reminding myself of how to experience this moment or reminding myself that I have a choice. Like I, I have worked so much in on this particular area that when things don't go the way that they were planned to be okay with it because of all the work that's been put in there, I didn't have to go through those steps this time. In the previous times, it was necessary. But this time, because I expanded my capacity to be okay with these kinds of things, it didn't happen. It's kind of like a pitcher seeing a pitch over and over again. Now, if you don't practice it, you strike out every single time. But before, I was getting a little bit of the bat on the ball. It was a pop fly. You know, I missed it by so much. Uh, in the beginning, it was big whiffs. But then I just kept, oh, okay, that's a single. Okay, that's a double. Okay, I hit it into, I hit it into the shortstop. Okay, they got me out on first base. Uh, but on this particular instance, that didn't happen. It was a home run. Not something to be celebrated, but just something to be 
grateful for, grateful that I passed this test, if there is a such thing as a test. And so I just kindly and found a phone number of another your colleague uh, gave me a phone number of somebody who I can contact. I contacted a person and they said, oh my God, Keith, I'm so sorry. I totally forgot about it. The old Keith would have been like, what, what do you mean you forget about it? Like, how could you? Like, this has been on the schedule for like a week and a half. I did none of that. I was like, oh, it's no problem. Are they are are, are the folks still there? If so, uh, can they still come and we can we can do the presentation? And it just worked out so smoothly. I didn't feel this need to talk to managers or talk to uh, uh, or to have an issue with her or to come back to my friends and tell them how awful the situation was and how unprofessional it was and how it was a waste of my time. I had none of that. It was it was it was perfect just the way that it unfolded. It could have been no other way. And it was great affirmation that this new definition that I have of how I want to show up in the world, how I want to show up in life to where nothing bothers me is really making a difference in informing my behavior. So if I want to be peaceful, then I'm not bothered by things that are outside of my control. If I want to be kind, no matter what, I show up kind, regardless of how other people show up. And, and what I've also learned is that when I'm in situations that I am bothered, to not say, I never want to experience that situation again, but rather say, if I experience that situation again, I would like to handle it differently. I would like to accept it just as it is. I like to not make an enemy of that person. If it's a person who did something that is not to my liking, I don't want to confuse their behavior, their choices with who they are. Like I want to continue to practice showing up kind, show up like acceptance, uh, no matter what. Now I may choose not to be, not to be around that person, uh, but if something happens to where life, life arranges itself in such a way that we cross paths, I'm totally cool with that too. I'm not closing my heart, but instead I'm just staying open. That is part of living an unconditional life. That is having a definition of how I want to show up in the world that's aligned with how I want to experience life, how I want to experience the world. And it's so freeing. And more and more I do the practice and commit myself to it on a daily basis the more and more this kind of uh, expansion of being peaceful and kind and grateful, compassionate, empathetic, it just kind of happens on its own. And I'm not setting out to do it. I'm just doing this one thing every single morning and it's just happening. You know, you take enough swings at the baseball uh, with, a, a, with a focus to do your best every single time, you start hitting every fastball that comes across the plate. Like it's just something that just happens, you know, you just get better at it. And I think that's what, that's what's happened. So I like to invite anyone who's listening to consider giving up, having, having a definition or a requirement of how people, things, or the world needs to be for you to be happy. That's a losing game. You will never win that. However, Try a, try a different approach, which is having a definition of how you want to be so you experience life in a different kind of way. And in doing so, you'll be free. I mean, free from needing anything outside of you to make you happy because the answer is not out there. I've learned that the answer is inside. And that's created a whole different experience. Like I said, no bad days, only good days. And great days. That's it. That's it. So thank you for listening.